we need to talk about server actions. The next 13.4 release next added the missing primitive for the React server component model, the ability to mutate data from the client on the server. This is one of the most important pieces to any web framework, especially the server side ones, because you need a way not just to read data on the client, but send data back to the server. And this model is how we do it. First thing you need to know about server actions is they don't work like other primitives and other frameworks. They feel a little like a hybrid between the remix approach and the trpc approach, but they're unique in a lot of ways as well. Some of those ways are really nice and composable. Some of them have some scary side effects. I wanna talk about all of that here. The example the team loves to give is the progressive enhancement example, which means that a form is posting to an endpoint without any JavaScript being involved at all. If we take a look here at the example in the blog post that they put out, you see they're importing KV from their new KV storage stuff. The more important part here is the async increment function, which has a use server call. It awaits a kv.increment call, which in this case is updating their KV store. And then when you click like, it bumps that. It does that because the button's type is submit and the action is bound here and becomes the endpoint that this form posts to, like a traditional form action, the way browsers worked before Ajax and JavaScript even existed. This lets us write code in the usual React way without actually having to ship React and JavaScript to the user at all. It's really cool how powerful this pattern is. That said, it's not really for me, and there are a couple of catches. The big catch is the way scope works here. If you were to have defined a variable outside, it'll actually make its way into the form. I'm gonna do a kind of dangerous and silly example here where we're going to async function write file. Obviously we have to use server to let React know this is a server component and we need to let this behave on the server. Const state is hello world, sure, path hello, fs dot write file. This is a path, which is path. And then use data, which is data, and return, done. Let's see if this works. And then we have to bind it. We'll go use the example here, throw that in there. If this works correctly, then when I click this, it should write the file in my terminal. And look at that, there's a new file in public, hello.txt. None of that code ran on the client, no JavaScript ran on the client at all. I could even disable JavaScript. But since this is a use server function, it was able to do something, in this case, my dev server, like write a file, update my database, use my environment variables and secure things there. Really, really cool stuff. There are some gotchas though. This this one is going to be a slightly contrived example, but let's say we put const path equals public here instead because we were defining it using other things we passed in through props. Not the simplest example, but things like this, I suspect will be pretty common. The way it tries to do this for now is a little scary to me. They actually take whatever you're doing here. In this case, that variable we're defining that's outside of this closure, but is accessible within it. And they encode this in the form. So if I was to save this and we go back here, we look at the HTML, we're gonna see something interesting. Let's go. To this form quick. You'll see in this form, we actually have encoded public hello text. This is an action value that is being bound by React in order to make sure that the form posting gets this data to that form. It's an interesting way of doing this. There's a couple other methods they could have chosen. The sketch here is let's say that this wasn't path, this was secret path. We didn't want the client to know where this file is being stored, or maybe it was a secret key or something like that. It's really scary that this gets encoded in the form in plain text right now. And even if it's encrypted, that data still gets sent to the user as HTML. My expectation would have been that all of the things this closure needs would have been rerun when the post happens rather than encoded in the form and then only accessed through this specific created endpoint. It's a weird behavior and it really does show how alpha this stuff is. I've had my own fun set of bugs like headers and requests weren't accessible for a while, but once that's been fixed, these are the edgy edge cases that kind of break my mental model that scare me. The biggest thing that doesn't jive with me here is that it changes how I understood server components and how they worked before. Previously, when a server component returned something, that would go to the client in the sense that it was either going as HTML or mounting other components that would do their own things. But if it wasn't in a return, it didn't go to the user. And I feel like that model made a lot of sense to me. Where with this, there are things that go into that form that I didn't put there. I didn't say put secret path inside of this form. I just put a secret path variable here, used it here, and I passed the function to the form. But passing this function to the form does not make it clear to me that anything that was accessed outside of this is now also being made part of the form. The control flow here is what's scary to me, but the benefits of progressive enhancement in line when you have behaviors like a delete button, not having to write the exact input needed here, like path, string, and having to deal with that in this level. That's the change here that's so nice. And I get why they're leaning in this direction. It's just, we have some gotchas that we're gonna have to clear out over the next few weeks. That all said, this is only one of the two ways you can use server actions. And the two different ways behave almost entirely differently. The other way would be breaking this out into its own file and consuming that in a client component. So let's take a look at how you do that really quick. 
First, I'm going to yoink this function. I'll just put this back in. I don't even need to put it back in here. I'm going to yoink all of the contents here. We're going to go to a different file. We'll just name it actions.ts. Doesn't matter what you name it, just going with that for now. Use server on top up there. Also just realized I didn't select the workspace TypeScript version, which will give us some very handy errors. Make sure you're always using the TypeScript version for the repo you're in. I have a whole video about that coming in the near future. I hope VS Code makes that easier for us. So now I have a use server file. This use server directive isn't needed in it because the file is use server, which tells the compiler, hey, everything in here needs to be accessible in this way. If you export something that isn't a function, it will yell at you in the compiler level. So that's going to yell for different reasons. If I just import this for now. See here, we're getting an error. That's because because we're exporting something that isn't in action, which it gets mad at us for because the whole point of this compiler step is that you can only export async functions such that they are accessible on a client or other environments. It's a little weird to not be able to export things like this, but I understand why they did it. It keeps the orchestration of what is imported and exported from where very clean and prevents weird cyclical import behaviors. We now have our export const write file that's being passed over here and now should be able to refresh, click, and once again, the file is written. And this time, if we look at the form, not going to include things it doesn't need because this time it all exists in that external separate file. It has an ID in order for it to identify which endpoint it's supposed to hit, but it doesn't need any data specific to this call because it's all done at this file level. Generally, I'm going to recommend defining your actions in this way if you can. It prevents these weird closures and leakage issues. On top of that, we can do a lot of fun things when we separate it, including use and client. Let's take a look at how we would do that. So right now we're doing the form action behaviors. Let's say we want to do this the old single page app style instead. Let's make us a button.tsx. Obviously this has to be use client because we want it to run on server and client and actually ship JavaScript to the user. We're going to export const write button equals turn div button write file on click equals. And here's where things get fun. We can actually import this action and do a then this value is whatever you're returning there. And since it's all just TypeScript, it's whatever we put there. We can go back here and instead of returning done, return success true. And now over here, we'll see the type of val is success boolean. I can console.log, we did it, val. So we have to mount this button. And this is where I think some of the coolest magic happens. I forgot to actually delete the file. I can do that quick too first. Delete, write, and once again, it wrote the file. But this time, we actually have things coming back in the console. If you look at the network tab, you can see that we posted an interesting payload with an interesting response because this is how the React compiler determines what actions are where. It basically indexes them the way that hooks worked in the past, where each action that a route has access to gets its own identifier. And then when you post something to that endpoint, it requires the identifier to know which action it is. We can go way deeper on how that works under the hood later, but it's also probably gonna change and it doesn't matter too much. The simple thing to know is we are basically just doing a fetch post call when we import in a client component. And we can treat that like we would any other promise, except we get the data back and it's type safe. It's like mini TRPC in this way. It is missing some pieces though. Most importantly, it's missing validation, which is very important to me, which is why months ago when I first started using server actions, I actually solved these problems. We built a package at Ping called Zact, and I'm really proud of what we built with the Zact package. The TLDR is Zod Server Actions. We wanted it to be as easy as possible to validate server actions. So we give you a special wrapper, you give it a Zod object, and then you pass it an async function. And now this is a validated function. This function will not run unless your validator passes and you know the input of this is going to be correct. So if I yoink this example, first I have to install Zact, npm install Zact. I will paste this in here instead. In here, we have a different action. This time it's named validated action. Just a silly example. It will return a message. This also, again, runs on server. So none of this has to worry about scope leak or closures or any of that. You can write whatever in here. You can access secrets, do whatever you need. As long as you don't return it, the client will never see it. Really nice for keeping your application secure. So if I grab this, I change the action there. Validated action takes stuff in. We define that in the other file, as you saw. Now we're gonna click the button and submit. Normally add an input and do things the React way, but I'm gonna be lazy and do that. Hey, we're getting an error. What's that error? Huh, let's take a look at it on the server. Oh, weird. You're not subscribed yet? Really? Come on. We're putting so much work into all these videos and y'all couldn't bother to subscribe. You're gonna hold up the whole video because you avoided clicking one button. Come on. So we see in the server action here, if the string isn't six characters, I throw this cheeky little error. So we can just go here and make this longer. We'll say longer string. Now, when I go and click write file, it'll be fine. And we get the message, hello, longer string, because that's what we returned there. Nice and simple, super cool that we're basically just doing TRPC without everything on the outside, just the inside function piece that you can import 
externally. It's weirdly convenient and really nice. This vaguely reminds me of the patterns I've seen in things like next fetch in Telefunk, where you can just export a function and then call it like a hook. That said, these ones are much nicer and feel more native to React. They're still very, very early. And I find helpers like what I built here almost necessary. We also have a dumb little hook I made, which is extraordinarily early, even more so than the rest of this. And I can yoink this example here, paste this here instead. This package is old. Okay, we have a lot to fix. Regardless, here is like a more traditional React query type mutation thing where we call mutate and we have a data state, loading state, error state. We can go back here. We just trust the TypeScript things will be much easier. And now we run the server action, we get hello, whatever back. I just have this as random text. So that makes sense. If I was to flex this, it'd be a lot cleaner. Call. Cool. Now I run the server action, we get a loading state, and we get the hello state right after. Nice, simple, easy, works just like React Query used to, but we get to take advantage of the new primitives. This is kind of a rejection of the progressive enhancement style that the earlier examples that Next put out showed us, but I don't think these primitives should be locked to people using forms. I have much more dynamic stuff in my applications, and I love using the primitives for that too. Again, they're still very early. We're still figuring out how to do things like auth in them, but I have a lot of hope that this pattern will be very scalable for many different types of applications. I know we're excitedly already starting to use it. I really appreciate y'all for waiting for my takes on this video as well as to check out my package. Please take a look at Zach. We have it up on GitHub. It's one of the first open source packages we made at Peng. It's had like 50 stars before we started talking about it last week and now it has almost 500. So if you want to start using server actions responsibly right now while sharing some of your mental model from React Query, this is one of the best ways to do it. I'm really proud of what we made here. Check it out if you haven't. Thank you guys as always. Peace nerds.